And God bless you. Yeah. Our focus this morning is going to be on communion. And uh, again, the communion cups. Trust you got one. If you had did not get one coming in, we'll see that you get one. And uh, if you'll just sure. Bill will be glad to deliver them or something. They're right back there on that table. And uh, we'll go from there. Jan mentioned it, that uh, for some, this Thanksgiving in many ways was a thankless Thanksgiving. I don't know about you, but it does just kind of tear at my heart to see all the turmoil, the confusion. And I made a list of things like we hear it every day, unemployment. Food lines, can you believe those food lines? When Jen was sharing about the hungry, I thought of Convoy of Hope. Yeah. And the millions of meals that they have distributed during this COVID time. Amen. And there's a lot of other organizations doing the same thing. And and just the lines and, and the need is so overwhelming, it's hard to believe we're in America with that kind of response. And how about the isolation <laughs> and the separation and the pandemic, the virus, the confusion? My goodness, you get so many different stories and so many different ways from so many different people. You just don't know where to start and the fear that it has generated and in the homicides and the suicides. Society as a whole is in a state that I personally have never seen before or never thought I would see in America. The election. My goodness. <laughs> The division in the government. No one can agree on anything. And how about <laughs> even the business community? <laughs> and, the, and the business community. It, it, it's, the, it's the little guy against the big guy. I heard the other day that in America there is 650 billionaires. 650 billionaires. Anybody here? <laughs> and over this, these few months, they have made trillions with a T. Trillions of dollars. And on the other hand, we've got the small businessman, the mom and top stores, Island bankruptcy. Can't keep the doors open. And unfortunately, even within the church body, even within the evangelical body, there's this division. And we look around and think, gee whiz, how can this be? So we need a touch from heaven, do we not? Amen. But here's the truth, and Jan mentioned it. As Christians, even in the midst of all of this society's ills and confusion, we have much to be thankful for, do we not? Amen. Thanksgiving is a good day. But thanks living is a better day. And David in Psalm 103, I made a few thoughts here just from Psalm 103. David reminds us that the word of God is about thanks living. If we want to know how to live and when to live and where to live, we go to the word of God. 
We look at society through this book. We don't look at this book through society. We, we all line up our own life. It's thanks living is what the book is all about. Psalm 103, know most of it. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Let's do it again, just like Jan said, with more gusto. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. It seems to me that David is almost giving his soul a command. <laughs> no option here. Every day we need to bless the Lord for his goodness and his faithfulness to us. It's a lifestyle. For the believer. How do we honor the Lord? How do we bless the Lord? Well, we've done that today. We do it in so many ways and styles and 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 uh, options, but we exalt his name. We give honor, we give glory to his name. We worship him in spirit and in truth. We give honor. We bless the Lord. But verse 2 Forget not all of what? God is good how long? All the time. Forget not his benefit. Some translation says don't forget all his benefit. There's too many. How many ever forgot an important date? You know little personal reference here, confession. 64 years ago, on November the 24th, Lenore and I got married. So last Tuesday was our anniversary. However, it took me a long time to learn that lesson. Because we got married on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. That was my anniversary. I had a few times in those early years, one particular we won't go into. But I come home from work about 10 o'clock at night. The table is set. The candles are there. The china's out. I'm so naive. It's not Saturday after Thanksgiving. <laughs> but I, and all of a sudden she realized that I didn't have a clue what was going on. So she just made a deal out. Oh, I thought it'd be special to have candle. I thought we'd just do something special. Didn't say one word about the anniversary. She even took the gift she got me that was in the other room away and hid it. It was a tool chest, but I had no clue. But Saturday, I show up. So I would recommend we pay a little more attention to not only the day, but the date. That's important. You know, I thought about in uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 8. Remember, Jesus had just fed the multitudes. And um, he did it with seven loaves and a few fishes, right? They all got in the boat and they went on the other side. No, some were five, some were seven. I read Mark. <laughs> You want to change this Bible here? <laughs> I read it this morning, in fact. Okay. <laughs> so, so he, he fed the multitudes, five or four thousand, whatever Jesus decided. And, and they went to the other side of the boat afterwards. And, and they didn't have any food. The disciples started complaining. No food. No food. I, there was leftovers, but obviously they didn't like leftovers. They didn't take them with them. But 
they reasoned among themselves saying, we have no food. And when Jesus knew it, he said to them, why reason ye because you have no food? Perceive not yet, neither understand. Have ye your hearts been hardened? That's kind of right down where we live, isn't it? Whoa, okay, I'll get those later. Thank you. Oh, okay, okay, I'll go. <laughs> Without them, I'll leave quicker. Let me finish what Jesus said. <laughs> Having eyes you see not. Having ears you hear not. And do ye not remember? How long ago was it? When I break the five loaves among 5,000, how many baskets were left? They said 12. And when the seven loaves and the 4,000, <laughs> how many baskets were left? They said seven. And he said unto them, how is it that you don't understand? So the disciples were as forgetful as we are, right? I mean, they just had that wonderful experience and all of a sudden it's gone. Forget none of his benefits. Note this, God's past benefits are foretelling of his future blessings. Think about it. God's past benefits are foretelling of his future blessings. We should never forget the past because it's going to bless us in the future. The disciples learned that lesson, I think, on that day. Five quick benefits. We all know them well. We don't forget them either. He forgives all our sins. All our sins. Remember the first time when your sins were forgiven? Some of us were seven. I think Lewis was five. And I, we've, so others, others are in their 30s and 40s. And, but remember that whew, load that just went off. We should remember that time. Maybe we should remember the last time we asked for forgiveness. And remember how faithful he was. Then he said, oh, in verse 10, he said, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. He didn't give us what we deserved. He forgave all our sins. He removes them as far as the what? The east coast is from the west coast. He buries them in the deepest sea to be remembered against us how often? No more. no more. Isn't it amazing that God remembers what man forgets? Our humanity. God knows we're nothing but dust. In fact, David refers to that. He knows we're fragile. We, he knows we're not perfect. He knows we're going to make mistakes. He knows that we are human. Now, We've got friends that don't think we are human because they point out every little that we should know better and do better because we can be better. But then the other thought is, remember this, God forgets what man remembers. God forgets our sins to remember against us no more 
but we got those other people that keep reminding us. But there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. He heals all our diseases. The disease of the soul, he heals. Our emotions, our mind, the lust, the bitterness, the hatred, all comes out. He heals, yes, our bodies, but he heals our soul and restores us. He redeems our life from the pit of destruction. We were slaves to sin and Satan. But Christ paid the price. And he bought us from that. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is what? Eternal life. So he took us out of the miry clay and he set our feet on a solid rock to stay. Verse 4 says, He crowns us with loving kindness and compassion. That He is merciful and gracious and slow to anger and He is everlasting. He knoweth our frame and that we are but dust, like the grass of the, and the flowers that pass away. But we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We need never to forget that. Verse 5, he satisfies our years and our mouth. Some translation says years, some translation says mouth. With good things. Remember what used to come out of your mouth. Remember what used to be. Old things passed away. Behold, all things became new. He fills us with the best for us. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. When we look back, we see what God has done. That's what David's saying. When we look around, we see what God is doing. Even in the midst of all of this, God is doing some great things. We loved those worship times when those young people were gathering in the masses around the beaches and in the cities where all the turmoil was going on up the street and they were singing praises to God. So where iniquity abounds, the grace of God does what? Much more abound. We look back, we remember how good God has been. We look around and we can see that God is still on the throne and he's still good. We need not fear the past nor doubt the future for he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. A good friend of ours, in fact, Clyde Harvey was we lived in San Diego a lot of years ago and our second son was playing Pop Warner football and Clyde Harvey was his football coach for Pop Warner football. We were showing the film at church crossing the switchblade. My son, Greg, invites Clyde to go to the movie. Well, I won't go to church, but I'll go to the movie. So he came to crossing the switchblade showing, gave his heart to the Lord. We had our fifth son. <laughs> he joined our family about that time for just relationship. But he became our junior high pastor. He was on our staff. He pastors, he's pastored a couple, three churches. I think he's in the Minnesota now, pastoring in the cold country. But he did a devotion. I'll never forget it this time of year. He asked two questions. First question was, how many have received Christmas catalogs in the mail? <laughs> Remember the Sears and Roebuck and the Montgomery Wards and yeah, all those? And now it's Costco's and Nordstrom's and uh, Big Lots and uh, for us, Dollar Store and, you know, things like that. And then he said this, has anybody ever received a Thanksgiving catalog? But you know what? The 
folks what this is all about. This is our Thanksgiving catalog. And David said it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not any <laughs> of his benefits. He was pretty harsh with his disciples. Having eyes you can't see, having ears you can't hear. No, let's understand. God is good all the time. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your goodness. We are delighted that we are together in the body of Christ. And we are mindful of your goodness and your faithfulness. Let's take a moment. Trust we all have communion cup. If you don't, we'll see that you get one. But let's take a moment. Let Noel help us just think a little bit about God's goodness, God's faithfulness. We think about some of the difficult times and then we think about the fact God was with us all the time. We came out on the other side stronger in the Lord. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Let's worship together. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life for me. Bread represents his body that was what? Broken for us. Broken for us. Think about the cross. The suffering. When we view that again, over the media, and they show it starting now for Christmas Eve and then Easter. You think how much could he love us? How much could he love us? He loved us enough, it cost him his life. He has an investment in us. He invested his life in us. That whosoever will may come. He was broken for the world, all humanity, because he knew all humanity was nothing but dust without him. But with him, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Let's take the bread together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And the cup
Aren't you glad that his blood will never lose its power? He can save to the uttermost. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is not temporary. This is permanent. In Christ, it's everlasting. This cup represents his blood that was shed, shed for us. See, the cross and the atonement is linked together with eternity. From the cross to the atonement to eternity. We are not, we are just pilgrims passing through. This is not our home. This is not our home. We are heaven bound. David mentioned the eagle. Strong. In Christ we are strong. And it soars to the skies. Think about that. One day we're going to soar through the sky. Because Jesus is coming back. And this assures us and guarantees us. And represents our guarantee in Christ. Let's take the cup together. Thank you. I stand alive in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me. probably should pass on this but it comes to mind that the scripture there that says that God knows and always remembers we are nothing but dust I was thinking of Pastor Mike remember the story he tells about being a marine and how he had to get over that barricade and how tough he was when he got over that barricade well, when he was coming down that ladder, he wasn't so tough. <laughs> Mike forgot that he is but dust. He thought he could handle it. Shoot. Hey, I've been there. I've done that. Sometimes we overrate ourselves, don't we? We think we're stronger, better, and than we are. There's the man that knows right there. No roof, no ladders. Right there. Yeah. Keep your faith in God and listen to him. I told Judy, I said, Judy, you should never let him go to the motorhome lot alone. Go with him. He thinks he's a Marine. He thinks he can handle it. Hey, not so. Let's stand together and sing together. Victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sought me and loved me with his Everybody said, yeah. have a great year after this last Thanksgiving. All right. God bless you.